part of the Ion Radio Network. Tonight on Unleashed, Donald Trump, while trying to relate to Jews, ends up offending them. Well, at least he didn't call them rapists. Uh, This uh, caused Lindsey Graham to come out swinging uncharacteristically. Very interesting. And today, Senate Republicans, uh, aping their counterparts in the House, voted to repeal Obamacare, but they forgot one little detail. I'll explain. It's Thursday, December 3rd, 2015, just after 11 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone. And Matt Connerton Unleashed starts now. Good evening. Welcome, everybody. Matt Connerton unleashed on this Thursday evening on IPM Nation and, of course, the new or new ish OTR FM, the uh, premium channel on the Ohm Times Radio Network. So, uh, which uh, we're very honored, of course, every Tuesday and Thursday night to be uh, carried on OTR FM. Brings us to an even larger audience and, of course, uh, also. Always very grateful to the, uh, the IPM Nation faithful as well, listening to us on IPM Nation 1. And uh, it is uh, Thursday and got lots to talk about tonight. Um, first, I want to mention, if you didn't see it, uh, yesterday's television edition of Matt Connerton Unleashed is up and available uh, on the uh, IPM Nation YouTube channel and on our Vimeo channel as well. If you go to IPMNation.com, easiest way, uh, go to IPM Nation, click the, uh, click the YouTube Preferably the YouTube link in the upper right corner on any page on the site, and that'll take you right to our YouTube channel, and you can click uh, Unleashed and, and get that. So we had a, we had a fun time yesterday on television. Uh, at, uh, of course, as, I, as advertised, uh, I was on uh, John Hopwood's show, Award 13 with John Hopwood, uh, yesterday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and then immediately after that, as is every Wednesday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, the uh, Matt Connerton Unleashed Television Edition. And then we get those up and available the same day, so you can uh, view them at your leisure if you'd like to watch it later on at Vimeo or YouTube. I guess at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, some people are, I don't know, at work or something. Some silly thing. <laughs> but uh, what we did uh, yesterday was we, you know, we talked about uh, a, lot of, a lot of politics on, uh, on Ward 13, uh, with uh, John and uh, Joe LaChance was with, with, with blah, blah, blah. Joe LaChance was with us. Something's wrong with my mouth. And uh, so then, uh, and then Joe, I, I got to talk Joe into sticking around for, actually, I talked him into sticking around for the first half of my show, and then he ended up staying for the whole thing, and we really, um, really got in deep about presidential politics, which, of course, is uh, uh, pretty much my favorite thing in the world to talk about. So, so that is what we will discuss tonight, uh, because, of course, and we'll discuss a specific individual. You already know who I'm referring to. Well, of course, I mentioned him in the intro, but it's impossible to not, not talk about him, the Donald. So we'll get into, uh, we'll get into that. Um, and uh, what else? What else did I want to make sure to tell you? Um, oh, don't forget, uh, the, uh, the shows are uh, archived. Home Times does a great job of uh, archiving all the shows uh, that, uh, that we do Tuesdays and Thursday nights on OTRFM at omtimes.com uh, slash IOM. You can uh, use the, uh, the fancy radio on demand feature uh, to listen to me anytime if you don't get a chance to listen live. And, of course, um, we do the show uh, five nights a week on IPM Nation plus the television edition. So, uh, and we do archive all those on IPM Nation, and we uh, put them on the Matt Connerton Unleashed Facebook page. So, uh, you know, we did, um, uh, we, uh, on Wednesdays we cheat, to be honest with you. 
uh, Wednesday nights on the uh, radio edition of Unleashed, we we replay the audio uh, from the the television edition earlier in the day. But it, but it's uh, most nights it's live, and of course every Tuesday and Thursday night when we're also on OTR FM, it's always live. Uh, that's the the commitment that I make to the great people at home times. Although uh, Thanksgiving, okay, that was that was one exception. Thanksgiving night we ran a repeat uh, on uh, OTR because uh, well it was Thanksgiving night and you know I had turkey to eat and then had to pass out. So that you know last last Thursday was was a repeat, but uh, but other than that we're pretty good about uh, keeping to our schedule as uh, as we. Uh, build our loyal fan base and uh, thank you all uh, so much for for uh, caring about the show and listening well, I would say you know whether you love me or you hate me uh, I'm glad you're here so um, you know speaking of that by the way and, and then we'll get to Trump I promise and, and Trump evokes uh, feelings of love and or hate but you know um, I think I'm a pretty nice guy uh, but and, and I think anyone who knows me would tell you that I'm a pretty nice guy but I I, I tend to just I tend to upset people who, and I don't just mean, you know, I mean, obviously, politically, I'm sure there's people who listen to the show and get very angry with me. But, uh, but sometimes I upset people just who, who just can't take a joke, you know. Um, we have a, you know what, I won't mention, I'll, I'll give him this much respect. I won't, I won't mention his name. But, uh, but there's a certain gentleman who does a, uh, who's a conservative talk show host here in Manchester, New Hampshire. And by the way, I forgot to mention. We are broadcasting from the Uptown Auto Repair Studio in Manchester, New Hampshire, the uh, headquarters of uh, the IPM Nation here. And um, but uh, this this particular gentleman, conservative talk shows locally, and we I know him a little bit. We're acquaintances. He's been on this show before. He's been on the television edition. We're Facebook friends and whatnot for whatever that's worth in in, in this era. And uh, but I heard from him recently. Uh, we had actually talked about doing some business together. And possibly uh, because we had done uh, a little bit of business previously in terms of carrying his programming on IPM Nation. And that kind of stalled out. And then I finally heard something back from him. This was a couple of weeks ago. But he was upset with me. Apparently, he uh, doesn't want to do business with me. Uh, He was upset because he saw me on John Hopwood's show. War 13 with John Hopwood, which you've heard me mention many times on the program. And Hopwood was making fun of him, and it offended him that it bothered him that I was there with Hopwood, even though I did not partake in the making fun of this gentleman because I, I try to stay neutral and just get along with everybody. I really do. Longtime listeners of this show might find that hard to believe, but I really do because here's the thing. So, so, so some jokes were made at, at this gentleman's expense, and he's mad at me for being there, for being present even though I didn't participate, but he felt that my being there legitimizes what, what John was doing and, and the guys from Amsterdam, which is another IPM Nation show, and they've been a part of the family for a long time. Love those guys. But uh, so this, uh, this gentleman w- was upset with me about it, and here's the thing. I, I just don't know why some of these people, because he's not the only one to get upset with me. You know, a local mayoral candidate in uh, Manchester, Glenn R.J. Willette, uh, he and I have had a, 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 a very interesting relationship. He's like, we're, we're like frenemies. You ever hear, hear that term, frenemies? We're friends, but sometimes we're enemies. Um, but the, the thing is, these people, they get upset with me if I'm even uh, remotely associated with some sort of joke at their expense. And it's like, I don't understand why they take themselves so seriously. I don't understand. You know, uh, long-time listeners or viewers of me, I think, probably know by now, you know, my approach with this um, and with some of the other programming I do, which isn't as serious, this, can't, this can be a pretty serious show at times but uh, because I get intense and, and upset about certain issues, political issues. But, but uh, some of the other programming I do is, is much less serious. But, but even, even on this show or on Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades, another political show that I do, where we actually goof around a lot on that show, even though we're discussing politics. You know, I, my thing has always been, I take the issues that I discuss seriously, but I don't take myself seriously. I'm a talk show host. I don't, 
I, I can't take myself too seriously. So if somebody wants to make fun of me, like the gentleman that I was talking about ha- gets ridiculed in the way that he does, which is part of the gig, by the way. I'm sorry, but if you're a political talk show host, people are going to pick on you. People who don't like you, people who disagree with you, are going to pick on you as part of the job. Uh, but if, if someone does that to me, if somebody picks on me, I don't care because I don't take myself that seriously. It doesn't, I don't get all butt hurt over it. John Hopwood, host of Ward 13, who I was mentioning, you know what? He actually one time wrote something on a website, miscellanyblue.com, attacking me. He also attacked Gary, with whom I do that other show, Rock, Paper, and Grenades, but he, he attacked me. And you know what Gary and I did? I did a dramatic reading of what he wrote on the air, one of my dramatic readings, and had fun with it and made it into a big joke. And you know what ended up happening? I, I think I won John's respect that way because instead of getting upset and worked up, we had fun with it and, and just made it into a goof. And now John and I have become friends. And I get to go on his show and he comes on my show and we have a great time. Because I don't take myself so seriously. If somebody wants to, to attack me or whatever, it's like, you know what they say? As long as they spell your name right, you know, it's, it's publicity. Even if they're hating on you, it's publicity. So I don't know. I just wanted to vent about that a little bit because some of these people take themselves too seriously. And you know why I think people don't mess with me uh, more than they do? Because they know there's no point. Because I don't take myself too seriously. And speaking of people not to be taken seriously, when we come back, we'll get into Trump. Don't go away. More Unleashed coming up. Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Alaya, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. The name is Bond. James Bond. No, the name is Joe. The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on OldTimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Welcome back, everybody. Matt Connerton, Unleashed. We're live from the Uptown Auto Repair Studio in Manchester, New Hampshire on this uh, Thursday evening on IPM Nation and OTR FM. I like, uh, actually, I like saying the new OTR FM. I don't know how new it is now, though. It's been a few weeks. Now it's more like new ish. But I think it sounds good. The new OTR FM. And I know, I know they, uh, I know they appreciate it. Uh, and I, I appreciate uh, being a part of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we got to get into Trump. So here's the newest thing. Uh, you know, he, he does uh, seem to enjoy offending people. And why shouldn't he? The more people he offends, the more his poll numbers seem to improve. Uh, the conservative base of the Republican Party seems to really like this stuff. And uh, this time he offended Jews. Um, like I said in the intro, at least he didn't call them rapists. But... Uh, it, it, but it, it's he did this this thing, which is so funny. It, it's like um, 
almost uh, you know it, it's the stuff that sitcoms television sitcoms are made of where you have a character who is uh somehow trying to relate to someone uh different from him uh be it uh w- w- you know whether it be uh, race or or religion or what have you uh and and in in the course of trying to relate to that person uh ends up uh, offending them uh th- this is this is trump um so uh, I got this. Uh, this is being uh, reported quite a bit on the on the internet. You know that it's being reported because that damn liberal media is at it again, uh, reporting on things that Trump actually said and did. <laughs> uh, because they just hate him so much, which is so silly. Look, the the liberal media, the so called liberal media, they love Donald Trump. Are you kidding? What? Who in the media couldn't possibly love this guy? I mean, I love talking about him. I'm not mainstream media by any means. Obviously, with this program, I'd I'd have to fall into the category of uh, alternative media. But uh, look, I mean, uh, he's he's a buffoon, and I don't want him to be president. But uh, you know, he is a lot of fun to talk about and and just watch, uh, just do these things, and and it, it's. I I don't know if it's um if it's an arrogance I don't know if it's a lack of self awareness I I continue to to feel like um it's not Donald Trump the the business mogul that we're seeing it's it's Donald Trump the television character morphed into a caricature of himself <laughs> you know uh I mean there there's look there's video footage of him discussing politics as recently as 2012 where he doesn't seem nearly as just ridiculous as uh as as he's been behaving you know um but uh but but this just continues every day it's something new with this guy uh so uh <laughs> so anyway uh so igor bobic wrote this uh for huff post uh gop presidential candidates uh stereotype jews at republican jewish forum it wasn't just trump by the way all right so let me read this to you Several Republican presidential candidates on Thursday made comments that appeared to stereotype Jewish people at a presidential forum attended by many Republican Jewish donors and activists. The event, hosted by the Republican Jewish Coalition, featured nearly every 2016 GOP candidate and centered on foreign policy. The RJC is heavily funded by GOP mega donor and casino magnate Sheldon Adelson. Remember that name? We heard a lot about him in 2012, who is also a strong defender of Israel. In his speech at the forum, Ohio Governor John Kasich said his mother advised him to seek Jewish friends because they are loyal. Uh, Quote, my mother told me one time, she said, Johnny, when I was a very young man, she said, Johnny, I want you to look for a really good friend. Get somebody who's Jewish. And you know why she said that? She said, no matter what happens to you, your friend, your Jewish friend, will stick by your side and fight right with you and stand by you, unquote. Now, um, wow, speaking of a lack of self-awareness, I I guess um, uh, Governor Kasich, who I I kind of like in some ways, but I guess he he didn't get the memo that uh, the rules of political uh, correctness dictate that even if you're uh, trying to uh, reinforce some sort of positive stereotype, it doesn't matter because obviously that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to be complimentary here, <laughs> but uh, even positive stereotypes aren't okay according to the rules of political correctness. Uh, all stereotypes are bad because stereotyping itself is bad. Uh, of, you know, the, 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 one of the odd sort of things about political correctness though is it's like you can't um you can't use any type of stereotyping even positive stereotyping because stereotyping is uh dividing people into groups and classifications and assigning characteristics to them etc uh and yet political correctness is all about protecting specific groups from specific types of you know being offended Uh, kind of an interesting just uh, Self uh, contradiction within uh, PC. Anyway, I digressed a little bit there as I often do. And then 
So after Kasich says this, real estate mogul Donald Trump, on the other hand, heaped praise on the business skills of Jewish people. Trump said, uh, before referencing his book, The Art of the Deal, quote, I'm a negotiator like you folks. Is there anyone who doesn't negotiate deals in this room? Perhaps more than any room I've spoken to, unquote. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, the presidential candidate then predicted he would not gain the support of Jews in his bid for the White House because he is independently wealthy. Quote, you're not going to support me because I don't want your money. You want to control your politician, unquote. That's a weird thing to say. I Maybe that's another, maybe that's a Jewish stereotype that uh, I'm not aware of. Jews want to control their politicians more than other people. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully Donald Trump in the coming days can uh, continue to uh, educate the rest of us uh, uh, on this, on these matters. Uh, while Trump claims his campaign is self-funded, the majority of his funding to date actually comes from donors, according to his latest campaign finance report. Well, I'll tell you what, here's, here's one uh, interesting thing. I think it's probably a self-fulfilling prophecy, what Trump said when he said, uh, you're not going to support me. <laughs> <laughs> because they probably are not going to uh, to support him. Um, there was also, it's not in this article, but I, I saw something somewhere else about uh, Ben Carson spoke at this, and somehow he managed to pronounce Hamas wrong, which sounds like a minor detail, uh, and I'm not sure how he pronounced it. Maybe he pronounced it Hamas, I don't know. But uh, But one of the knocks on Ben Carson is when it comes to foreign policy matters, um, he seems to be in over his head. Uh, and uh, I think that's putting it kindly. Actually, here I found it. Uh, New York Times. Oh, uh, New York Times, a liberal media property. They're just they're just trying to rip down Ben Carson because he's a conservative by by reporting on things he actually said and did. When he says something crazy, they actually report it. If, if they weren't the evil liberal media, they would just ignore it. <laughs> I think that's what the expectation some people have. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, here it is. Ben Carson mispronouncing Hamas fails to impress Republican Jewish leaders. I know we're coming up to a, a, a break here. I'll get this in quick. Uh, ben Carson, whose presidential campaign has been stymied with questions about his depth on foreign policy, addressed one of the most influential Republican Jewish organizations on Thursday, but probably left few there with much confidence that his knowledge is growing. He repeatedly mispronounced the name of the extremist group Hamas, saying something that sounded more like hummus. I was right. I called it. He said hummus. Maybe he was hungry. Uh, he read from prepared remarks for the entire half hour that he spoke. Perhaps his prepared remarks um, <laughs> in the future. If I were uh, on Dr. Carson's campaign, perhaps they they should be, uh, you know, if there's a, an unusual word in there, just uh, write it write it phonetically, you know. Uh, he read from prepared remarks for the entire half hour that he spoke, uh, rushing through his words with his head tilted toward the lectern. He rarely made eye contact with his audience. Um, that sounds like him. Uh, usually his eyes are half open. Uh, and he was probably rushing because he was uncomfortable. Uh, the speech to the Republican Jewish coalition in Washington uh, which was part history lesson on the Middle East conflict and part observational narrative about, uh, oh, they made a mistake here. The New York Times, oh, they, it says Mr. Carson. Mr. Carson's own take, it's Dr. Carson, New York Times. Oh, maybe they are. See, they're trying to, uh, they're trying to ignore, clearly, the, the liberal media now trying to ignore that he's a world-renowned neurosurgeon by calling him Mr. Carson. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I have a lot of, if you haven't noticed, I have a lot of fun with the whole liberal media thing. Uh, <clears throat> all right, I, I will, I will self-edit this as I read it. Uh, the speech at the RJC, which was part history lesson on the Middle East conflict and part observational narrative about Dr. Carson's own take on the un underpinnings of the Israeli-Palestine conflict, uh, was full of generalities and came as he faced increasing questions about his lack of knowledge on, on foreign policy. 
He said at one point, the world is complicated. The Middle East is even more complicated. Oh. <laughs> Great. Uh, before he began speaking, he acknowledged that he knew he had to leave a favorable impression, saying, quote, I will actually be using a script. It may be the first time anybody has seen me doing that, unquote. I would probably not make it the last time, uh, Dr. Carson. Uh, the, the speech spanned a range of topics from uh, circumcision to the United Nations to his own recent trip to Israel, during which he said he toured the tunnels that Palestine terrorists use as a way to mount assaults against Israel. He added that he worried he might be shot. Uh, I actually had a chance to go into some of those tunnels when I uh, was there last year, although we were carefully looking for people who might be trying to shoot us when we came out. Uh, the reviews uh, of some there were not favorable. Ari Fleischer, the former press sec uh, secretary for George W. Bush, said on Twitter, Poor Ben Carson. Someone should have told him how to pronounce Hamas. He sounds like he's not familiar with the group. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't know why he's done as well as he has in some polls. Uh, and, and this, you know, I often joke that before he speaks in public, whether it be at a debate or, or in any capacity, he probably should drink a gallon of coffee first because he always seems like he either just, uh, uh, woke up from a long nap or, um, or he's looking to, to take one really soon. Cause, cause he's a little beat, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe all that, uh, trying to learn, uh, how to pronounce things just, uh, <laughs> tuckers him out. Oh, well, at least we know it's, it, we know it's not because he's stupid because he's a very smart guy. He's a world renowned neurosurgeon. He's probably a genius, but he is not presidential material. All right. More unleashed. We'll be right back. The real conscious connection. Ohm times radio. IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleashed, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleashed, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Welcome back, hey everybody. Matt Connerton Unleashed. We're live from the Uptown Auto Repair Studio in Manchester, New Hampshire. Still no snow in this part of the country. Not that I mind. I don't care if I never see another snowflake again, but no, we're so far so good here in the 
in the Northeast, at least, uh, at least where I am. Uh, by the way, I'll just remind everybody, of course, that uh, you can hear us uh, five nights a week at 11 p.m. Eastern on IPM Nation 1. And then uh, every Tuesday and Thursday night, we are also on the new-ish OTR-FM, the premium channel, on Ohm Times Radio Network. So thank you, uh, thank you, everybody who listens, wherever you listen. We appreciate it. And uh, I'm laughing because a cat is about to step on my computer, and I'm trying to prevent him from doing that. And I'm now putting him on my lap. I'm now petting the kitty. And perhaps you will hear him purr because he has an extremely loud purr. Let me turn this mic up and see if it picks it up. No, yeah, it's not going to work. All right, he's already, now he's in the window. He's looking out the window. Cats love windows. Um, This cat loves windows. Not all cats do, I guess, but, you know, because they all, they're natural explorers, you know. He's looking out the window longing to be outside, knowing he'll never get outside. But uh, but they they do like to explore and, and go out and kill things like birds and whatnot. You ever watch a cat kill something? I'll tell you what. You could take the most the most affectionate, just sweetest cat. But if 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 that cat gets a hold of something like a mouse or a bird, um, they they like to kill slowly. <laughs> Once they have their prey, you know they they don't just. They don't just kill it. They don't kill it quick. They like to mess with it. And uh, ca- cats, uh, you know, I-, I love cats, and they're they're, uh, they're very sweet. But they they have a, a little bit of a they got a little bit of a dark side to them when it comes to killing something. Uh, it's kind of interesting. So, um, so anybody who has been a longtime listener of this program, because Unleashed uh, started in uh, the summer of 2011. And, um, <laughs> you know, I have been saying literally four years now, and f- for all I know, I will have to be talking about this for years to come. And we've talked about it a lot on the show recently, but also over the span of, of the years about um, my uh, displeasure with watching, well, it, it began with, you know, more than, I don't know, 50, 60 times now. I'm not even sure what we're up to. The number of times that uh, congressional Republicans have attempted to, um, well, have voted to, can't even really say attempted to, because every time they've done it, they know it had no chance of passing, but they've uh, voted to repeal Obamacare. And, you know, I, 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 get, uh, I get why uh, why they do it, even though they know that they can't do it because it's, you know, a grand symbolic gesture. Look, we're, we're really trying to kill this thing. And, uh, I, I personally don't have much use for grand symbolic gestures. Uh, my attitude is, uh, Hey, why not? Why don't you move on to something productive or just don't do anything at all. And sometimes I think it'd be better if these, uh, so-called leaders, uh, did in fact do nothing at all because, uh, they like to do, uh, tremendous, uh, tremendously more harm than good in so many ways. But, uh, you know, my attitude about it is, um, you know, it's, it's silly anyway to uh, try to repeal it at this point, the Affordable Care Act. The, the, the smart thing to do is, uh, and, and I'm not, I don't want to be misunderstood, I'm not a defender of the Affordable Care Act, but I am a practical pragmatist, a non-ideological practical pragmatist. And so I've been saying for years now, the, the smart thing to do is, uh, rather than trying to repeal it, because you're, if you're not going to, and you know you're not going to, you're just wasting your time, focus on reform. Focus, forget about repeal and replace. I, I mean, in, in 2012, I used to laugh out loud when, it, you know, Mitt Romney, uh, the, the, the one time, really, the guy would show any real passion was when he was talking about Obamacare. I'd see him give these speeches. He would pound that podium and say, on day one, I will repeal and replace Obamacare. And I would say, well, no, that's silly. Number one, how are you going to do that on day one? You're not going to repeal it at all, most likely. And number two, replace it with what? We all know you're full of crap. You have nothing to replace it with, and you have no intentions of replacing it with anything. So the further away we get from that, uh, I just I continue to be amazed um, that, uh, that they're, they're still trying to do this. You know, we had... Um, uh, but not all of them. I mean, there there are some who uh, are a little smarter than that. You know, we had um, 
uh, it, it was it was a while ago now. It was it was last uh, winter, but uh, on the television edition, uh, Jen and I talked with Congressman Frank Ginta, who. Uh, you know, one of the things that impressed me about uh, Congressman Ginta is he seemed to get it that, you know, it, 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 the smart thing to do is reform the parts that aren't good and make it more free market based because you're never going to repeal the whole thing. Well, now, uh, not only are they still hanging on to this repeal and replace mantra, but now uh, it's moved to the Senate. So now uh, you have Senate Republicans, not just House Republicans, trying to repeal Obamacare. Uh, and then I, I saw this. Jonathan Cain uh, wrote this on Huff Post. Uh, GOP's new plan to repeal Obamacare is missing one obvious thing. And, you know, I really don't even have to uh, read this to you. I mean, if you want to check it out, it's on Huff Post. But uh, uh, Jonathan Cohn, I'm sorry, I think I said Cain. Jonathan Cohn uh, is, is the, the author of this. But uh, basically, uh, what they're talking about is um, they're not really talking about repeal and replace. They're not even there's not even that uh, pretense that they that they have something to replace it with. It, it's just repeal. They have nothing to replace it with, and they're really not even trying. Um, they're just voting to repeal it. And I think that and like I said, the article I would encourage you to check it out. Actually, I'll share it out on Facebook after the show. Um, so you can, because it, it goes pretty in depth, uh, regarding what, uh, what they're trying to do, but you know, my frustration has always been, I've said this from the beginning, I, I blame, I blame both parties for, for this because on the one hand, I blame Democrats for not understanding because they're hardwired not to understand this, that if you want to make something better, you know, if you want to improve the healthcare system or make anything better for that matter, the way to do that is not to uh, make it more bureaucratic and get the government even more involved and uh, it just and just add layer upon layer of bureaucracy. That's the wrong way to improve something. That doesn't improve anything. What has that ever improved? And I also blame Republicans because historically, uh, nationally at least, and I know in individual states like here in New Hampshire, Republicans have done some good things on a state level in terms of health care. But I'm talking about nationally in the macro. Uh, Republicans really have only been concerned about health care reform when they have something to push back against, whether it be Obamacare or Hillary Care. If you remember during the Clinton administration, Hillary had her health care task force, which died an early death. Um, you know, so, so in a sense, they kind of let this happen because the type of health care reform I would have liked to have seen is a Republican-style health care reform, where you try to have less bureaucracy and the federal government is less involved and it's more a free market-based system. And, you know, you should be able to buy insurance policies across state lines and whatnot, get rid of all the unnecessary regulation, and you would see the cost of health care plummet if it were more of a free market-based system. But the great frustration that I've always had is the exact kind of health care reform that I would like to see which is a Republican style health care reform, is exactly the type of health care reform that could never happen because there's never been any real energy on the right nationally to get that done. And and what happens is so then when Democrats start pushing for health care reform, and we saw this with Obamacare, just like we saw with Hillary Care, once once they start pushing, then you've got all these Republicans going, Well, wait a minute, what about our ideas? We have ideas too. Why don't you include us in this, in, in the in crafting this legislation? Maybe we can compromise on some things. Oh, okay, great. So what are your ideas? What do you have? And then it's crickets because they really don't have anything. Paul Ryan at one point was supposedly working on something a few years ago. I don't know what happened to that. So, but now, so these Senate Republicans are just trying to repeal it without even the pretense of saying that they're going to replace it with anything. And it's politically suicidal because, um, there's a lot of people who, if they do lose health coverage, they're going to be very angry. And in some states, that could cause a real problem for Republicans. Now, in some states, it could work to their benefit. 
because the, the reality of the Affordable Care Act is, is this, you know, um, Republicans uh, want you to believe that it's a miserable failure and it's destroyed the health care system. Democrats want you to believe that it's a rousing success and now everything's great and everybody has health care and everything's roses. And, uh, you know, because, of course, each party tries to, to spin it to the extreme of whatever they can to get you to uh, believe in what, you know, buy into what they're selling you. And the reality is, uh, you know, neither narrative is entirely true or entirely false. It, it's kind of a matter of perspective because it's a matter of geography to a large extent. Uh, there are some states where uh, if you look at polling data, uh, people are overall happy with the ACA because it's benefited them in some way, whether it be through the Medicaid expansion or maybe they're just maybe they have uh, some reasonably priced uh, policies on the healthcare exchange in their state, and they're able, people are able to get healthcare who couldn't otherwise afford it. Um, in some states, in other states, it's been the opposite. In other states, it's been a disaster, and there's all these horror stories uh, about people actually losing healthcare or all of a sudden their premiums have tripled and they're in trouble. You know, it, it's it's a mixed bag. But um, these Republicans who want to rep- who are actively trying to repeal this um, are probably going to want to take into account uh, what the electoral map looks like and can they risk uh, blowing it for whomever their candidate is, who's probably going to be Donald Trump in those states where uh, the ACA has gone over fairly well uh, versus those states where repealing uh, health care reform might be fine. They might be able to get away with it without any political consequences. And, and perhaps they're already making these calculations, but so often they look like the gang that can't shoot straight that I kind of doubt that they are. Uh, a little bit more to go. One segment left. More Unleashed coming up. Don't go away. Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Join Elliot Jolish. The Business Therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul. Every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Welcome back as we cruise into our final segment tonight on Matt Connerton Unleashed. Don't forget, you can check out this week's television edition of Unleashed. It is up and available on both the IPM Nation YouTube and Vimeo channels. If you go to IPMNation.com and uh, right in the upper right corner of the screen, you can uh, you can find links to both our YouTube and Vimeo. Uh, we prefer that you use the uh, YouTube, but we, we put them up on Vimeo as a backup. Um, also, uh, check out this week's uh, Ward 13, which you'll also find on uh, on YouTube. I was uh, on that show as well, as you heard me mention earlier, and had a had a great conversation 
Lots of uh, lots of talk of, of presidential politics. Um, by the way, you know the uh, the elephant in the room, of course, is is the uh, shooting in San Bernardino. Um, you may have noticed, uh, depending on how much attention you pay when you listen to the when you listen to this program. Um, you know, when these mass shootings happen, I don't have a lot to say about them. Um, I just it's uh, you know I I don't know I just I kind of don't like talking about them. I. Um, I, I just don't. I, it's, it's not something I like to spend a lot of time on. Um, it's terrible. It's tragic. Um, you know, I, I don't, uh, believe that, um, that, uh, more gun control is the answer. You know, I'm a, I'm a pro second amendment guy and I don't, I don't think that, you know, we have, we have problems. I mean, part of it, part of, you know, what happens is obviously if it's an act of terrorism, if it's a radicalized, uh, uh, Islamic extremist, then, well, there's your answer to what caused that. You know, it's not, it's not the, the weapon itself that caused it. It's the radicalization of that individual, you know, or sometimes, uh, bad things happen because crazy people do crazy things. Um, it's not about the weapons. There's, there's, um, other things that go wrong. And I think there's, there are societal ills, which are difficult to identify and, um, and, and diagnose in our culture that contribute to this, this violence. Um, one thing, you know, I, I remember years ago, I, God knows, I don't give Rush Limbaugh credit for much of anything aside from being a, I mean, I respect him as a broadcaster. He's one of the most successful, uh, radio broadcasters in the history of the world. But uh, actually, you'd probably be in the top two. I'd say the top two are Howard Stern and Rush Limbaugh. Um, but, uh, but one thing I, I did hear Rush say, and this was many, many years ago that he said this, and it's always stuck with me. He, he said, um, in his estimation, the problem is that life is cheap. You know, we raise uh, our children to believe that um, not, I mean, no one intentionally does, but, but as a culture, we, we kind of raise people to believe that life is cheap. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I don't know if I've ever discussed this specifically on the air. I think I might've once, but to me, uh, I, I never understood. See, when I was a kid, I never liked, and I still don't like, uh, movies, um, like, uh, slasher films. You know, I, I was, I was kind of an uncool kid that way because, um, you know, my friends, you know, or not just my friends, but even, uh, family members on my mother's side uh, really liked stuff like Friday the 13th and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that. And uh, I did not. I, I never understood why that was interesting or or fun to watch. You know, I, I, I do get why scary movies are fun. You know, I, I mean, I and personally, I think... Uh, and and I, I I can't even begin to tell you the amount of crap I've taken for this from people over the years. But I think Blair Witch Project, remember that movie? Uh, was that late nineties? I think Blair Witch Project is brilliant because it's what you don't see that's scary, and you don't need blood and guts and gore. But you know, a guy in a hockey mask hacking people up. I never, even when I was a kid never got what is enjoyable or fun about watching that. I mean, obviously it's not real. It's not a documentary. It's a movie. It's fiction. But still, I, 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 I never got it. And I remember thinking, even when I was a kid, wondering, what is it that's gone wrong? Is it something in our DNA? Or is it, is it something else? It feels like there's something deeply wrong societally, culturally, in order for people to enjoy watching that. It's something, and I know, I mean, there's, there's probably listeners right now going, well, okay, it's one thing to not like that, but now you just sound like you're judging those of us who do like that. And I'm not, I'm trying not to. I just, to me, it's disgusting. I I don't get it. And I, and I remember uh, just wondering why, why do people like this and what is wrong with us that so many of us like this stuff? 
because this just seems wrong. It seems wrong. It seems gross to like this stuff. And I remember too, I've never seen any of these movies. And I know that there's um, some question about whether these are legit, this particular series. Um, Some people claim that they're actually fake, but uh, Faces of Death. I remember hearing my friends talk about Faces of Death. You know, and if you don't know what Faces of Death are, allegedly it's it's um, video footage um, compiled together, you know, into these little films of uh, of of people actually dying, people actually getting killed, and it's called Faces of Death. Well, there has been some some questions, some controversy. Well, obviously they're extremely controversial if they're real. That's very controversial. But there's also been, I, I guess, some people have said that those are actually not real that those are all fake and staged. I, I don't know. I don't care. I don't ever want to see any of those. And I, but I remember when I was a kid, I had friends who were like, yeah, Faces of Death is really cool. And don't get me wrong, I can sort of understand on some level, of, of, uh, you know, th- there is something in human nature that's sort of curious about death, but uh, I don't want to watch that. And I remember thinking it was very strange that I had friends who did want to watch those. But when I heard as an adult, when I just happened to hear Rush comment one time that part of the problem in our culture is that life is cheap, I immediately remembered um, how I used to feel when I was a kid when friends or even family would be so excited to watch Nightmare on Elm Street and seeing people getting hacked to death and and wondering if if that type of thing in our culture is part of what reinforces this subconscious thing where people are desensitized to human suffering and and to people dying. I don't know. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm completely, uh, you know, uh, just out on a limb with that, but I wonder about these things. Um, now, like I like I said, and I know we're almost out of time. I'm not a, a gun control guy because I I think whatever our, our our nation's ills are, with with this violence, um, it, it's it's not the weapons themselves, um, and you know, the the narrative that the uh, the the pro Second Amendment crowd uses, I, I agree with this idea that look, if you if you outlaw guns, well, criminals and crazy people don't care about doing things legally. If you, if you start uh, banning weapons and take away people's right to self-defense, then, you know, then only the criminals have the guns. And I think that's true. And, you know, actually you can even, I mean, it's counterintuitive, but you can even take the second amendment completely out of the equation and it still doesn't change anything. You still have a basic human right to defend yourself from violent people and crazy people. Um, Something interesting um, one of the ways that uh, that that the anti Second Amendment people, uh, the the liberals who want more gun control, one of the ways they politicize this is they they say, uh, look, in the face of all this violence, Republicans don't want to do anything about it. They don't want to do anything to address it. Paul Ryan, the new House Speaker, um, may have found a way to kind of inoculate the Republican Party from that criticism somewhat and and, and kind of um, give them a little bit of um, an inoculation from in terms of those people who maybe are on the fence about this stuff, who maybe maybe are not necessarily in favor of gun control, but could be swayed to be. Um, and what he has said is so he actually does want to do something about it. Now, it's not gun control. But this is on the New York Times, and this actually went up on December 1st. So this was before the shooting in San Bernardino, but after the shooting in Colorado, because unfortunately, these mass shootings do seem to be on the rise. Uh, It says here, according to this article, really quick, uh, efforts to overhaul the nation's approach to mental illness gained momentum on Tuesday, as House Speaker Paul Ryan urged lawmakers to do more to protect people after the deadly shooting last week at a Planned Parenthood clinic in Colorado. Ryan said, calling uh, the uh, clinic shooting on Friday, uh, which left three people dead appalling. He said, quote, one common denominator in these these tragedies is mental illness. That's why we need to look at fixing our nation's mental illness uh, health system. 
Um, while Democrats made it clear that they believe that Republicans were avoiding the real problem, law, uh, lax restrictions on access to guns, Mr. Ryan encouraged lawmakers from both parties to present their ideas to address the problems with mental health care. There's uh, much more to this article, uh, and, and we're about out of time, but w- I just wanted to mention that. Um, and again, if you want to look for it, it's up at uh, new, uh, nytimes.com, New York Times article. But um, very smart politically, and, and I don't know why this hasn't been done, at least to this extent, before. Uh, not only does he present a solution, well, not a, there is no, I don't know what a, the solution would be, but not only does he present something that he thinks may help to curb some of this, but it's not more gun control, which doesn't work anyway. But he is presenting something which inoculates him from the accusations that Republicans don't want to do anything about it. Very, very smart politically. And I think it's fundamentally correct as well. And I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think that he's on to something there. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see how that plays out and if that goes anywhere. Uh, my... Um, my fear is, unfortunately, that the discussion will just continue to be centered around the gun control aspect. It seems like whenever the mental health aspect of this is brought to the fore, it, it ends up being swept aside. Somehow it gets lost and, you know, we end up right back to gun control. Uh, we are out of time. So thank you all for joining us tonight on IPM Nation. And the new OTR FM, I appreciate it very much. Uh, I will be back tomorrow night only on IPM Nation 1 with our Friday night edition, which you can only hear on IPM Nation. Friday night edition is usually a little more laid back. Maybe we'll do something fun. Who knows? I don't want to talk about mass shootings anymore this week. God, I hope there aren't any more this week. Preferably ever, but we're out of time. Good night, everybody. Stay safe.